apart from. How do you do? Do you think it's safe to go into the shelter in the underground? Well, not in this weather. I'm afraid it's a bit showery. Showery? Yeah. Stuff isn't terribly dangerous. Just fragments from anti aircraft shells. They can sure mark you up when you get in the way of them. You're American, aren't you? Yes. You must be Miss Carla Nielsen. You are observant. Oh, I know all about you. Really? You're quite famous. Concert singer, photographer's delight. <laughs> you Americans are just as bad as the Irish. Well, <laughs> a lot of us are Irish. What's your name? Tim Handley. Delighted, Mr. Handley. Honored, Miss Nielsen. Now, by the way, there's a very pleasant shelter in the Barclay Hotel boiler room. Thank you, but uh, as it's all clear, I don't think it's necessary. Oh, I, I, I think it's very necessary. Why, we were apt to have another raid any moment. Do you really think oh, so? Oh, yes, a worse one. But uh, Barclay's quite safe. Besides, they have a dance floor, an orchestra, and just what it takes at our nerves. Well, uh, in that case, perhaps mine need it. Good. My, those anti-aircraft things make quite a big call, don't they? they? Remind me of some of my divots. You don't like the Barclay? Well, I'll take you over to the... What's the matter? I think someone is following us. Following us? Yes. The man just hid in the shadow. <laughs> well, you are getting the jitters, aren't you? <laughs> I'm sure that man is following us. Oh, we'll soon find out. Good evening. Good evening. The cafe, sir. Uh, just a moment, please. Good evening. Uh, you're looking for me. If I were, I should have caught up with you long ago. Oh, sorry. Guess I spoke out of turn. Jolly. Looks like a speakeasy thing. <laughs> speakeasy? Is there any difference? Purely academic. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, Peter? Uh, Temple Bar, double one, double one. Uh, hello, sir. Sergeant Moulton here. I'm sure of it now. Of what? Having seen you somewhere before. Perhaps in the newspapers. No, no, somewhere else. I've been trying to remember all evening. At my last concert. Oh, no. I haven't been to any concerts over here. You don't care for music? Now, late. Do I dance that badly? Uh, yes, sir. I'm in the Barclay Hotel shelter. Oh, very good, sir. Now I remember. Yes? You were at the Portuguese consulate. That's right, for a visa. I expected to go to Lisbon for a singing engagement. Oh. Why didn't you go? I'm stopping here in the hope of getting a United States visa. Oh, yes? Yes, my agent has a wonderful tour book for me there. You should have a great success in America. Perhaps, if I can get there. Well, what's wrong? Oh, I have applied again and again for a visa, but... No luck? No. I'm afraid my passport is a little old. Oh. Hey, uh, yes. Yeah. I have that one? Oh, certainly, sir. What would you like? Oh, I'd like a martini. Two, please. 
Tell me, where was your passport issued? In my home, Norway. I left in great haste after the invasion. There was no time to get a new one. Well, maybe I could help you get a visa. Really? I'm over here on legal business with the U.S. consulate. You are a lawyer? A graduate of law school, if that makes me one. But I do know my way around the consulate. Oh, if, if you could help me. Well, at least I can try. You are kind. Very kind. Ah, he pleases the lady. I hope I'm intruding in time. Mr. Oliver, Mr. Henley. Oh, ah, yeah. How are you? Don't get up. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Mr. Henley is from New York, and uh, Mr. Oliver is the music critic on the Daily Post. He's been most charitable to me in his reviews. Well, you are good, you know, Carla. Enjoying London, old chap? Not bad. You're putting on a great show. Show? Uh, are you from the theater? Oh. No, Mr. Henley is a lawyer with the American Council. Oh, a diplomat. Beware of diplomats bearing notes, my dear, if you knew the trouble they can make. There's that guy who said he wasn't following me. Hey, probably a Scotland Yard man. They're all over the place. If he's from Scotland Yard, I'd like to know why he's so interested in me. Why don't you call his game? I have a good notion to. Please don't. I'm, I'm sure you are both mistaken. He's from the Yard, all right. Go on, old chap. Climb down the bladder's back. I'll stand by you. Official support of the British press and all that sort of rot. You know. Excuse me, please. And me. Now, look here. You say you're not following me, but I'm convinced you are. Who are you? Yes, who are you? My American friend here has a right to know. Sergeant Moulton, CID. CID? Translation. Criminal Investigation Department, Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard? Well, let's get on down there and settle this. Yes, and I'll go with you, Mr. Handy, and give you every assistance. It's outrageous, this Nosey Parker business. Just as you say, sir. Just a moment. I'm sorry, but I've got to teach this fellow a lesson. It'll only take a few minutes. If you don't mind waiting here, I'll see you home later. That won't be necessary, old chap. You run along with the sergeant. I'll drop Miss Nielsen off on my way to the yard. Very kind of you, Mr. Oliver. Great pleasure, Mr. Henley. I do hope it's nothing serious. Don't worry. May I look you up tomorrow? Please, sir. Good luck. Thanks. Uh, pardon me, sir. Your bill. Bill? Oh. Honeydew looks good in the three o'clock at Lingfield tomorrow. Well, if you're sure of it, I'll risk half a crown. Say, how much longer is Sir Henry going to be busy? Oh, I thought we'd wait for Mr. Oliver. He said he'd be along directly. Oliver? You mean we're waiting for him? Well, who does he think he is? Oh. Oh, the skies are beginning to clear. Ah, there you are, old boy. Sorry to keep you waiting, but uh, Miss Nilsson had so many interesting things to say. Really? Must have been a one-sided conversation. Oh. Sir Henry, we'll see you now, gentlemen. Oh, thank you. Good evening, Sir Henry. Sorry to disturb you, sir, but this is Mr. Hanley. We run across him under rather questionable circumstances, and I... Uh... Lured him in? Yes, sir. You bag big game. Mr. Hanley has quite a record. Criminal? Oh, yeah. He's been mixed up in a number of notorious cases. I say, that is a bit of luck. By the way, Mr. Hanley, what were the final results in that uh, airplane case? Well, as the embassy suspected, there was an inside leak of information on plane shipments. However, we were fortunate enough to run it down and plug at least one hole. Oh, rather a brilliant job. You ought to be congratulated. Thank you. Uh, that is not for publication, Mr. Oliver. May I add my congratulations, Mr. Hanley, and also for pulling my legs so beautifully? <laughs> well, it was partly your own fault, you know, luring me down here. I have an idea that you and the sergeant here were demonstrating a bit of your Scotland Yard technique. <laughs> well, it's an old ruse of ours, Mr. Handy, to get men here for questioning without detention or arrest. I'm surprised that it took you in. Well, as a matter of fact, I wanted to be taken in. I wanted to prove to Miss Nelson that I was uh, knowing from nothing. No. Translation? I, I wanted her to think that I was a useful young simpleton that could be pushed around a bit, old boy. Well, as Oscar Wilde once said, we have everything in common with America except language. <laughs> You two would have met sooner or later, anyhow. Mr. Handy is an old friend from the FBI in Washington. He's been working quietly at the United States Embassy on a phase of your own job, Mr. Oliver. Very clever, Mr. Hanley. But it would be less embarrassing for me if you'd identified yourself. And destroyed Miss Nelson's belief in both of us? Oh, no. Besides, I wanted to see Sir Henry and find out what you fellows have pinned on her. Nothing yet. Except bouquets and my capacity as music critic. Amateur status. <coughs> Will you be needing me in more tonight, sir? No, that'll be all sudden. Very good, sir. Uh, sit down, Mr. Hanley. Well, we haven't anything definitely on Miss Nielsen. At least, uh, not enough direct evidence to arrest her. But she's given concerts in several northern cities for the British Red Cross. 
in two instances near hidden airdromes, where new American planes had recently arrived. Shortly after she left, both airdromes were bombed and several planes destroyed. She's moved into the flat below you, Mr. Hanley. That's why Sergeant Moulton and I gave you such special attention. <laughs> I see. I very carefully arranged for her to accidentally learn my address. And the bait worked? Well, her anxiety to get a U.S. visa for her passport interests me very much. I prefer to keep her here under observation. That may not suit my plans, Mr. Oliver. I already have my plans in operation, and I prefer not to have them interfered with. Remember, gentlemen, our fight and our future depend largely on the supply of planes coming to us from America. That takes precedence over anything. That's Mr. Hanley's assignment from his headquarters. That's yours here, Mr. Oliver. Planes are our lifeline, and the enemy isn't bothering with scruples in their endeavor to break it. You may be uh, interested in this. Uh, this report contains a transcription of a radio message received from an American plane flying the Atlantic. Our speed is decreasing to 250 miles per hour and gradually slowing down. Something's wrong with the motor. Pressure's okay. Plenty of gas. Motor's clogging. Losing altitude fast. Motor's gone. Well, here we go. Looks like to finish. There's no doubt that this plane and others had been tampered with before leaving the United States. Well, if Miss Nielsen is connected with this, I hope to trace through her the higher ups and the lower down. That's precisely what I've been working on, Mr. Hanley. Now, look here. Now, you two if... follow whatever method you like. It doesn't matter who runs her down. If she's dangerous, she must be stopped. You may go to any extremes, gentlemen, to accomplish that purpose. Miss Nelson? Yes? Telegram. Thank you. Mine? Yes, I, I couldn't sleep. I was worried. What happened? Nothing much. They admitted their mistake and apologized. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm sorry it spoiled our evening. So am I. Uh, what are you doing for luncheon tomorrow? Oh, I... I promised Reggie Oliver I'd go for a drive in the country. Oh, I see. By the way, after I left, you didn't happen to say anything to Mr. Honor about my helping you at the consulate. Oh, no, not a word. Good. Well, if you'll be at the consulate tomorrow morning, say, at 10, I think I might be able to help you. Really? I could be there at 9. Good. Then 9 it is. Good night. Good night. Oh, uh... Yes? Be sure and ask for Mr. Cromwell. Mr. Cromwell. Good night. Mr. Cromwell, please. Miss Nelson. Oh, yes, miss. He's expecting you. Will you step this way, please? We'll be there at 11. Thank you. Come in. Miss Nelson, sir. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Mr. Cromwell, Miss Nelson. How do you do? Pleasure. Uh, have you got your passport? Uh, yes. <laughs> Such as it is. There you are, Frank. I'm sure there'll be no difficulty, Miss Nelson. Excuse me. Sit down, won't you? Yes. Thank you. Well, it's all fixed. Fixed? Yes. Oh, I can't believe it. Visa and everything. How did you manage it? Oh, I just kept on talking till I wore him down. You must have spoken the right words. I wish I could always do that. Well, here are embassy reservations on the plane to Lisbon. Oh. On the Pan American Clipper from Lisbon oh. to New York. Oh, how can I thank you? Oh. I know. I promised to sing at your wedding. That may not be entirely satisfactory. But we can talk about it on the plane. Plane? Yes. You are going to? Yes, confidential mission. Oh. That is, if you don't mind my going along. Mind? I'm delighted. 
So am I. All in order, Miss Nielsen. There you are. Oh, thank you. Well, we better get going. The plane leaves at 11 o'clock. Come on. So long, Frank. So long. Well, thank you again and goodbye. Not at all. Bye, boy. Oh, John, a taxi, please. Yes, sir. But the ladies' car is waiting, sir. Oh, I forgot. Reggie's waiting outside. He brought me. Oh, did he? Yes. We were on our way to the country. Uh, well, well, we'll uh, send him our thanks from another country. Oh, but... Just wondering whether Oliver was still sitting in his car. We should have sent him a bunch of forget-me-nots tied up in diplomatic red tape. before the clipper leaves. About two hours. Like to rest? Oh, no, thank you. I think I'll uh, call on the agency that books my concerts. All right, I'll uh, take you as soon as we finish with the customs. You know, they're being rather strict these days. They may keep me here for some time. Oh, well, um, in that case, you needn't bother. I'll, uh, I'll take a taxi. Right, be back in a moment. Taxi, please. Taxi! Be sure and watch the time. Now, don't be late. Don't worry. I'll be back shortly. Ready, sir. Oh, uh, what's the address? It's, uh, it's Roma Valde 17. Got it? Yes, sir. Roma Valde 17. Another taxi. Taxi! Si, signora. Take me to the room of Chiado, 29. Si, signora. Follow that cab. Follow, signor Portuguese. I don't want to follow that cab. Quickly, please. What cab? The cab the girl took down there. Take a taxi que signorina tomó. Oh, depresa. Oh, oh. Depresa. Pronto, pronto. Oh, signor. Perdone, signor. Pronto, depresa. Wait till I come out. Senor Brunner? Yes. Senora Nielsen. Greetings, my dear. You're looking wonderfully well. And you, senor? I'm so glad to see you. You are fortunate getting away so soon. Very. You received my cable? I did. But I left in a hurry and I didn't have time to answer. Doesn't matter. And now may I see the new musical score? Yes, come. I'll be back presently. Manuel, Pablo, watch. A precaution. Ah, you have new equipment. Yes, a very late short wave. I'm in touch with America regularly. My new score. This will replace our codes which have been detected in America. I understand. Three months of work. Naturally, I am a little proud of it. Copies of the code have been sent to our agents in all parts of the world. Every conceivable circumstance has been foreseen. It seems it worked out beautifully. It is. 
course, um, you will have to study the technique very carefully. Yes. I think you'll understand. Thank you. That's a compliment from you. Now, um, give me your report. A friend arranged my visa in London. A friend? Yes. We leave by the Pan American Clipper tonight. Who is this friend? A young lawyer of the American consulate. How long have you known him? Oh, less than 24 hours. And he shows no curiosity? No. No, he is uh, rather naive. He might be useful to us. Unless... Well... What are you thinking that you're not telling me? Only that uh, when I left the quayside, I saw him get into another cab. You did? And did follow. Stay where you are. Anything in his pocket? The food give all right. Put him away. Go back. What did he do? Why? He followed you. That is enough. If he had been an enemy, you know perfectly well I can take care of myself. What would you suggest? That a man in your position shouldn't lose his head so easily. He is an enemy removed. One less to fight. How do you know who he was? And how do you know? Is it possible that your anxiety is a trifle out of place? Senor Brunner, I'm just as good a soldier as you are, perhaps better. I'm responsible, not you. And this is murder. Where is the American gentleman? Cadiz. Where is the man, the American gentleman? Where is he? Oh. The Americano? Yes, yes. Por favor, senora. Por aquí, por aquí. Y he tomado taxi. He went away in a taxi? He tomado taxi. Señora, señora. Aunque doy eh? Everything all right, sir? All right. This fellow followed every taxi in town but the right one. But the lady's cab just came back, sir. Oh, she's here, yeah. señor. Oh, I am glad to see you. Well, that makes my day practically perfect. Did you see your concert people? Yes. Yes. Oh, anything wrong? No, no, nothing. No trouble about your passport? Oh, I forgot all about it. But you've got to have it validated over here. Come yes. On. Special plane arriving from London. Will there be any difficulty? Oh, no. I'll give him the diplomatic oh, high sign. Now, pardon me. Would you look after this lady? Oh, si, senor. This gentleman will take care of you. In the meantime, I'll see that the baggage gets on board. Thank you. Special plane arriving from London. Order. Oh, senor. The senora is very content. No, senora. Put the baggage on the clipper. Oh, si, sí, senor. You'll be along presently. Si, sí, senor. It's a rotten trick, Mr. Hanley. Definitely not cricket, old boy. But perfect football, Mr. Oliver. A reverse play around the end. You take a water taxi. Thanks to you, I had to get a special plane. Oh, if you'd only mention it, we would have been delighted to bring you along with us. Now, look here, old chap. It's not playing the game, bringing that girl here with her moth-eaten old passport and arranging a passage to America just when we're closing in on her. Merely giving her a little exercise. If she's so anxious to go to America, she may lead us to the people who are so anxious to have her there. Ah, you mean the chap's directing the sabotage of the planes. <gasps> Clever bit of deduction, Mr. Oliver. Yes. yes. Well, since you've started this gadding around, I have a notion to toddle along. What? Leave England in the spring, Mr. Oliver? 
Besides, think of your country's need. An excellent thought. You've convinced me. Mm. I'm sure Miss Notzer will be delighted with your company. Uh, I thought of that. Uh, this may help you to keep my presence from appearing too raw. It says that I've been appointed special correspondent in New York. Quite a bit of puff about it, too. Yes, they keep it set up for me in the office. Always modest, aren't you, Mr. Oliver? Oh, yes. <laughs> Porter, transfer my luggage to the New York Clipper, will you? See, thank you. Now, be careful of that one. It's got some bottles in it. See. You know, you have to have a reservation, don't you, Mr. Oliver? Oh, yes. Your consulate arranged that for me, thank you. Uh, Hello, Reggie. This is a surprise. I'm a very pleasant surprise for me, Carla. And me. At nine o'clock this morning, I'd resign myself to not seeing you again. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. But, you know, everything happened so sudden. Oh, please don't apologize. New York passengers, for the clipper, about. New York That's passengers, for the yeah. clipper, about. The train leaves in five minutes. The train leaves in five minutes. Can I have a word with you a moment, please? Certainly. Will you excuse me? What? Are you uh, Which side would you care to sit? Oh, it, it really doesn't matter. I'll just get rid of my hat. All right. Could we have a drink? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, some sherry. Uh, two sherry. Uh, no, make it three. Uh, three. Well, 3,000 miles with our charming companion shall improve your disposition a bit. You think so? Something bothering you? I cabled one of our chaps here to keep an eye on your charming artist friend until I arrived. You said charming as if you really meant something else. I do. I've had a report. The man followed her all right. You've just found his body in the river. Your sweet little friend seems to hesitate at nothing. Well, by process of elimination, it might have been me. Well, it looks as though we're going to have nice flying weather. Really, this is fun, Carla. Here we are all together again. Let's celebrate with a drink. Stuart. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Miraculous. The man reads my thoughts. Carla. Hanley, cheer up, old boy. Carla and I don't mind your being here, not in the least. In fact, the least, the better. Mm -hmm. Mud in your eye. Uh, translation? You're very good health, sir. Ah, you know I'm going to have the deuce of a time learning the language. <laughs> <laughs> sticking up in the air. Why don't you spread him out a bit? We haven't room. One of the biggest countries in the world and you haven't any room. You're always in a rush and you haven't any time. What have you got? Oomph. Oop, look out. Here come the photographers. Just a moment, Miss Nelson. Will you hold it, please? Come on, boys. Get in the picture. You flatter us. We're not prima donnas. The American press can't bother with men unless they are somebody. American football players are all stuff, Mr. Handley. You haven't made an end run for a long time. Well, I wouldn't be too sure about that. Thank you. How about it? Who is the tall guy? I don't know. I don't know who he is. Oh, Miss Nelson, will you make a statement for the press? I'm delighted to be back in America. And America's delighted to have her back. How'd you go in England? You better ask Mr. Oliver. He's a music critic. Does you Americans say she knocked him dead? <laughs> How about romance, Miss Nelson? No, no romance, I'm afraid. Oh, there is Mrs. Grenner. No romance. Do you hear that, old boy? Scarcely seems fair to you after your inspiring devotion all the way over. Thank you. Next, please. Thank you. Darling! Look Darling, up. Bertha! My dear Carla, it's so sweet of you to come. Let me look at you. Oh, you lovely thing in that gorgeous hat. I wish I could wear one like it, but I can't. <laughs> Don't flatter me. You look smart as ever. Oh, it's so sad nowadays. You can't get any more Paris models. You just have to wear any little old thing you can get. Thank right? you. <laughs> Darling, oh, I need it. I'm happy to see you. So am I, you sweet thing. Uh, oh, oh I, I want you to meet two friends of mine. Uh, they've been very kind to me abroad. Uh, Tim, Reggie. Thank you. I want you to meet Mrs. Grenner. How do you do? Mr. Hanley, Mr. Oliver. How do you do? So you do? good of you to look after dear Carla. It was a pleasure until British Enterprise began popping up all over the place. Oh. Carla and I were getting along very nicely until the Yankee competition began. <laughs> very amusing. You must both come and visit us at Sands Point next weekend if you're free. Delighted. Yeah. Once again, thanks for everything. And please come to see us. Goodbye. 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 Just a moment, please. Hold it. Thank you. to the right. Customs to the left. You get it? Yes. Yeah. Taxis to the right, taxis to the left. Where are your chaps, eh? Yes, we're on the job. 
Oh, it's all too bad. What's too bad? Our friend Carla has a really lovely neck. Well? One of these days, it may have a rope around it. Aren't you being a little premature? We haven't any evidence yet. All in good time, old boy. Meanwhile, you better come along to the office and let the chief give you the double O. Double what? Once over. Once over where? Oh, skip it. I'll write you a letter. Hey, somebody's coming up the private elevator. Must be Mr. Hanley. The clipper's in. Ah, Jimmy. Hello. Hello, bud. Wowie, glad to see you back, Mr. Hanley. Thanks. This is Ra Ra Sewell, one of our best fullbacks. Learning to be a dick. Inspector Oliver, Scotland Yard. How do you do? Scotland Yard? Gee, that sort of sends me wacky. Oh, the brain said PDQ. Better breeze in. He talks in code, doesn't he? Good morning, Chief. Come in, Tim. You're good news. Mr. Oliver? Mr. Tetlow. How do you do, sir? How do you do? My old friend Sir Henry Thorpe cabled me you'd arrive today. Sit down, will you? Thank you. Tim? Quite an unexpected trip. Thanks to Mr. Hanley. Don't mention it, Mr. Oliver. Well, Tim, you did a fine job in London, and the department extends its congratulations. Well, thanks, but I'd like to share that praise with my old Scotland Yard friend. He worked on the same case, you know. Good. I understand a passenger of some importance arrived on the clipper with you. Maybe, but I'm not sure. I'm afraid Tim takes a lot of convincing. Perhaps I can amplify that. We picked up a short wave from Lisbon. Here's our record of it. Try it on the phonograph. <laughs> That's the way it's scrambled. I'll show you. You have to reverse it. Set the needle in the center. Press this lever to the left. And the turntable revolves in the opposite direction, running the record backward and unscrambling the sound. F7 left Lisbon on Clipper this evening. She's escorted by two men. Investigate. Well, that seems to remove any remaining doubts about Miss Carla Nielsen. F7 to her friends. Perhaps we haven't been wasting our time. She was escorted by two men. Investigate. That means us. That's probably why we received that cordial invitation to call on her. We'll have to deal with whoever received that message. I'd like to know who it is. Well, frankly, so would I. You see, though we've broken down several of their codes and made a good quota of arrests, both here and in Canada, we can't make these saboteurs talk. So the guiding minds, the people at the top, elude us completely. Does the sabotage of boats and planes continue at about the same average? No, it's irregular. Lately, there's been a distinct lull. I believe that means a dangerous new move on their part. Come in. Photographs taken at the airport this morning. Thank you. Ah, the latest portraits of your traveling companion, gentlemen, and the lady who met her. Well, she's a Mrs. Grenner. She invited us to a place at Sands Point. Do you know anything about her background? Oh, yes, yes. They're the candy manufacturing people. Products sell everywhere. Grenner's quite a prominent citizen. He's lived in America for years. Uh, formerly lived in Switzerland, I believe. Made chocolates there. Excuse me. I think we should circulate around. Spend a little time on the Grenner home. You know, the direct approach. We're taught to take advantage of it. We'd rather not pursue the obvious. We prefer the indirect. Good old Scotland Yard. Dear old FBI. Ah, this will interest you both. Decoded message from Washington. Week tomorrow, daybreak, next squad bombing planes depart from Canada for Atlantic flight. New flying fortresses will begin to come through. You know how much depends on them. This may be the lull I mentioned, the calm before the storm. Seems there's work to be done. I'd better find a place to hang my umbrella. Oh, why not make yourself at home here? Use this as your headquarters. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you, but no thanks. I'll manage for myself. Besides, I've got to appear as a music critic. I'm going to the Metropolitan tonight to hear a Spanish opera sung in French by a lot of Argentines. I think I'll enjoy it. So long. Still on your own, eh? Yep. Always. Five thousand dollars, mother. Oh, Mr. Grenner, how can we thank you? The Red Cross is a worthy cause. That's all the thanks I need. Well, we mustn't take up any more of your valuable time, Mr. Grenner. Oh, not at all. My time is always yours when it's for humanity. Well, there's just one thing I wanted to ask you. Uh, do your chocolates put on weight? <laughs> <laughs> not these. 
our very latest containing vitamin Q, safe for children. Oh, Thank you. flatterer, I'm not that young. Sweets to the sweets. Thank you, Mr. Grella. I'm sorry you can't stay to meet Miss Carla Nielsen. We're expecting her any moment. The concert artist? Yes, but I believe my wife has already sent you invitations for the reception next Tuesday. Oh, I'm so glad. I think she's wonderful. She really? Oh, here she comes. My dear Carla. Sydney, I'm so glad to see you. Welcome to our home. I'm sorry I didn't get to the airport to meet you. So happy to see you. Nice to see you, Mrs. Baldwin. How do you Carla, dear, some of our neighbors. Mrs. Cheeseborough, mm -hmm. Mrs. Baldwin, and her daughter, Bettina. This is a happy landing among such kind friends. <laughs> well, uh, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye. 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 Thank you. Now, my dear, if you'll excuse us, please. Yes, surely. I want to be sure that Carla's room is comfortable. I never trust that to the servants. Oh, dear, let me have your cake. Thank you, darling. Come into the library. Some of our friends are waiting. You know Dr. Rowan? <laughs> Hello, Doctor. And Mr. Denby? Oh, how well, nice to see you again. Thank Won't you. you sit down? We didn't come to the airport because of the shortwave message I received from Lisbon warning me regarding two men traveling with you. I wanted to consult you first. Who are they? Oh, just casual acquaintances. One of them was a great help to me in London. Both I invited them here. Well, that's good. We can study them at close range. You remember Webster? Webster? Colonel Wenzel. Webster. At your service, madam. And now... Have you brought Senor Brunner's composition? Oh, yes. Splendid. Here it is. May we hear it? Certainly. Much depends on this innocent-looking music. Naturally, you have to understand, I haven't had enough time to study it. The code signals are spaced. Sometimes carried by the accompaniment, sometimes by the voice. Very ingenious. The code is in the variations. The melody carries straight through. But the messages occur like this. complicated. Her phrasing is brilliant. And no one else could interpret it so skillfully. Thank you. Our Washington source advises that a squadron of bombers will take off next Sunday. Could you be prepared by then? I'll try. But perfect coordination is essential. You see, my dear, the chemical formula is very sensitive. The ingredients must be freshly prepared and used within a few hours. And on that night, certain cargo ships will be approximately 700 miles at sea. Mr. Denby now has access to important marine insurance records. The cargoes will be aeroplane parts. You see the urgency? I do. And I shall be ready. Fine. Benzel, would you be good enough to get GBS in New York? I shall confirm your appearance on our concert program as guest artist next Saturday night. this evening, we will take you by remote control to the Sands Point home of our sponsor, Mr. Sidney Grenner. But you must have heard of Carla Nelson. She's an international artist. Oh, really? It's ready. I'll check the mic. Oh, Mr. Ronaldo, how do you work that thing? You simply talk into it like this. One, two, three, four, five. Now's the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country. Cute. Thank you. Oh, good evening, Mr. Grenner. Charming gathering. I'm looking forward to the concert. Yes, indeed, so am I. Yes, the economy. Yes, yes. Have you heard from Mr. Hanley? No, but perhaps Webster has a message. No, I asked him. I do hope he comes. So don't you worry, darling. No one ever refuses a weekend here. But you know when the Duke of Watson... Oh, well, Mrs. Nelson. Nice to see you. May I present Miss Nelson? How are you? How are you, Doctor? How are you, Brenda? Good evening, Denby. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Mr. Hanley. Mr. Hanley? Well, Miss Nelson was asking for you, sir. Thank you. Hello, Tim. Hello, Carla. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Grenner. Delighted to see you, Mr. Henley. Oh, I'm a Carla Nielsen fan. I wouldn't miss the big show for anything. <laughs> you hear, darling? My audience follows me around. <laughs> well, here's one of your audiences leaving. I'm busy. Oh, dear. Make sure Mr. Henley's comfortable. Don't worry. I'll take good care of him. Carla? <laughs> This is this Mr. Henley? Yes, Sidney. May I present Mr. Henley, Mr. Grenner? How do you do? I understand you were very helpful to Carly in London. Privilege. You're connected with the embassy? Oh, no, no. I'm merely lucky enough to get a few crumbs of legal business from them. Now and then. 
Isn't Reggie Oliver coming? Oh, I forgot. He sent his regrets. He said that as a music critic, he would have to hear you over the air. I'm sorry I won't have the pleasure of meeting him. Pardon, sir. Telephone. Excuse me. Pardon, monsieur? No, thanks. Hello? Yes, this is Mr. Grenner. Hello? Oh, hello, Lieutenant. Hello, Mr. Grenner. I'm very sorry that I can't come to your party. Do you know how it is? Confirmation of official orders. Yes. These daylight departures are very annoying. I understand. I'm sorry you can't be with us. Thanks for calling. Lieutenant Fenway confirms that our previous information is correct. Our bomber squad will take off at daybreak. Fenway is a very resourceful fellow. Nervous? Very. But I'll be all right. I'm always this way before my concert. Well, remember, you have my admiration and applause. Oh, thank you. I shall hold you to that. <laughs> Pardon me, Miss Nelson. You'll be on the air in just three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. I have to go. The radio man wants me. Well, he's not original. Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> Here's your music, my dear. Thank you, Sidney. All is well. Good. What up, monsieur? No, thanks. Oh, a little bit of red herring across the trail, eh? Oh. So it's old and direct himself, eh? Looking right at you, toots. Came to the party after all, huh? Yes, and it's a jolly do. What? Here, for goodness sake, take something. Not bad, my man. Marsden's the swankiest caterers in town. None less swankiest waiter. Must be a relief to get away from your own face for a change. It's good for snooping. What have you snooped? Nothing yet. Neither have I. I'm beginning to wonder if we're not on the wrong track. Have you seen the butler, Webster? Yes. You just come in, take another look. Oh, wait a Good sweet, madame. Champagne, monsieur? He's a vain devil, isn't he? That isn't vanity. He's watching us from the mirror now. In fact, he's been watching me all evening. He's a colonel, crack shot of his regiment, suspected of sabotage and murder in London. Madame? And in Liverpool? Madame? And Leeds. How did you happen to let him out of England, Mr. Oliver? I said suspected, Mr. Hand. Well, Carl, I'm afraid she's in bad company. Poor girl. Last time she gave a concert, air drums were blown up. What's next? Oh, just a little love song. Ready, Mr. Brenner. And now, we continue our program from the home of Mr. and Mrs. Sidney Grenner at Sands Point. And here is our sponsor, Mr. Grenner. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present to radio listeners the world over the voice of Miss Carla Nilsson. Start recording with Miss Nilsson's introduction and get everything until she's off the air.
Grandma's residence? This is Mr. Crow. Yes, Mr. Crow. May I speak to Dr. Rowan? Dr. Rowan is busy just now. Oh, will you please give him a message? That the prescription is ready for test tomorrow, and the doctor should see me in the morning. Very good, sir. Hello. Hello, operator? Yonkers, 
You'll get hungry. <laughs> oh, Webster. Yes, sir. Miss Nelson's music. Yes, sir. Lock it up. Webster. Yes, ma'am. Coffee and liqueur. Yes, madam, immediately. The way to serve the coffee in the curves. I could walk miles in this glorious air. If you go far enough in this direction, you'll walk right into Long Island Sound. Into the blue mists of tonight. Into the Never Never Land. Never to come back except as a ghost. Oh, well, there may be advantages in being a ghost. Ghosts have no tailor bills. No tight shoes. No yesterday's newspapers. Or silly little hats with funny hairdos. I wonder what ghosts really think about. Perhaps of a doorway on London night during an air raid. Or dancing at the Barclay Hotel. Or having tea on the Clifford. Or the beautiful city of Lisbon. Full of people too busy to enjoy the beauty. All trying to get away. To get away? Yes, from surroundings, companions. Or from themselves. It's a luxury to be oneself, isn't it? I imagine so. Suppose the ghosts put on flesh and blood for a moment. I don't think that they can. There's no need for me to tell you how fascinating I think you are. Times, in other moods. When ghosts could stay on Earth longer than a moment? Sometimes, a moment is a lifetime. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt our musical program for a news flash. One moment, please. Two British cargo steamers were torpedoed and sunk by an enemy submarine 700 miles out from New York. The crews are being rescued by an American liner. Our musical program continues. It's a matter of surprise? No, thanks. Mademoiselle? Will you excuse me for a second? Quite sure you won't change your mind, monsieur? Lovely song. Beautiful song, eh? Yeah. Music. Mm -hmm. It's gone. It's under this tray. Get it. <laughs> Colonel, won't you honor us with your glass? Yes, yes. do. Thank you. Carla, success, my dear. Congratulations. Großartig. Ausgezeichnet. Wunderbar. Hervorragend. To Carla. To Carla. Are you not delighted? Of course. Delighted. Hmm. And now I know you will excuse me, the excitement. I think I'll go to my room. Good night. Curious. And perhaps the strain. I wonder. Oh, wait up. You and your men can clear your things now. Yeah, monsieur. Uh, and give my compliments to Mr. Marsden. An excellent buffet. Merci, monsieur. Well, I must be in New York as early tomorrow, so I don't think I'll wait for uh, further news. And we'll hear from you in the morning. Oh, yes. I have a busy day, too. Well, if you're going to be, I'll drive you to the station. I need you there. Thank you.
Mrs. Webster. May I see you for a moment, please? Come in. What is it? The music. I left it on the piano. Then they gave me a sheet of music from the piano to put away. But it wasn't the right one. Did you search the drawing room? Yes, but I couldn't find it. It must be there. Why did you do it? Why? He'll come to in a minute. I only stunned him with an air pistol. I thought perhaps he might have taken the music. What's that? Driver's license, some money, identification cards. Country club, insurance, lawyer's club. That's Mr. Grenner returning from the station. I'll look after him presently. What happened? Are you all right? I don't know. Can you walk? I feel like I'm standing on my head. Maybe I better walk on my hands. Get some brandy. There. Is that better? Oh, fine. See? It's right on my bump of location. Now I can find my way to you in the dark. My dear Handley, I can't tell you how badly I feel that you should be injured in my home. It seems Webster made a grievous error. He mistook you for a prowler. Oh, it's a natural mistake. The wanderlust in me. I was taking a late stroll in the garden. I'm very sorry, Mr. Hanley. I hope you'll accept my apologies, sir. Necessary. You were merely doing your duty, and very well, too. What did you hit me with, a baseball? No, sir. It's a Scottish invention. When I was in service with Lord Retlow, we used that to stun the deer when they broke out of bounds, to avoid frightening them with a shot. Oh, very ingenious. Learn something. Weighted wooden pellets, eh? Yes, sir. You should have called four. Next time, sir. Curious that your butler should have mistaken me for a deer. Or was it a goat? <laughs> You're good health, sir. Well, now I think I shall go to sleep before I get into any more trouble. Thank you. So sorry. Night. Good night. Good night. night. Good night. a little more care and a little less impulsiveness, all that could have been avoided. I wonder how it got under there. Blown there, perhaps, by the breeze from the open window? Perhaps. So that's Yonkers 0411. A voice on the telephone said, the prescription will be ready for test tomorrow. The doctor will see you in the morning. 
Doesn't look much like a doctor's office, does it? Hardly. Shall we try and take a look inside? I better do a little reconnaissance first. Stand by. What are you doing? Making something for posterity. What are you doing here? Who are you? Better I ask you that question. I'm an officer. Oh, I see. In that case, I'll be very happy to give you... Sorry to interfere, Mr. Oliver. Not at all, old boy. Under the circumstances, I appreciate it. Now, as the Americans say, get going. Come on, quick. It must be in the variations. Then we've got to determine whether those variations mean numbers or letters or both. It's a tough nut to crack. We struck one or two musical codes in the bootlegging days. But the song itself was a signal, like uh, how dry I am and the coast was clear and a certain boat could come through the three-mile limit. But that was child's play compared to this. Oh, perhaps it's not a code after all. If it is, it's certainly a good one. Scotland Yard and the boys bagged a couple of twerps, sir. All right. Keep at it, boys. Hello, Oliver. I got your phone message. Any personal damage? Just a few bumps and bruises, but the arson experts seem to have lost their tongues. Oh? What are your names? Whom do you work for? All right, boys. If you think you're stubborn, you're going to have a lot of time to find out how stubborn we are. Come on. They won't talk. None of them will talk. We're sure that music is a code. Hanley's notes prove it. We've got to break it somehow. Hanley's notes? I thought he stayed overnight. He did, but he sent these in by Sewell. His shorthand notes, we've had them transcribed. Now, here's the first one. Listen to this. Code signal notes for letters are reversed from series X12. Number signals conform to new series 21B. I say he must have got this from the sheet music. Yes, if we could figure out what they mean, they'd be a great help. Those number series must refer to a new decoding system that's all Greek to us so far. You know, I'm a bit of a musician myself, in an amateur way. If you don't mind, I'll go in with the boys and take a shot at this. Well, you've had a hard night. You'd better take 40 winks. No, no, no. A pot of strong coffee will do wonders. All right, I'll send for it right away. I shall go north immediately after we talk to Carla. By all means, do so. Yes. Oh, come in, Carla. Good morning, Sydney. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Carla. Sit down. Carla, last night a private laboratory where I have been conducting secret tests on my chemical formula was raided. Two of our men disappeared. The place was destroyed by fire. Quite serious, Doctor. Whom do you suspect? We think that someone here may have intercepted a telephone message last night from the laboratory. One of your guests? That's barely possible, although we thought we knew them all. All except Mr. Hanley. Yes, but he was here in the house when it happened. Did he telephone or contact anyone? No. Sure? Yes. He did spend some time in the garden. I saw him throw a cigarette box over the wall. I found it this morning. 
Empty. We verified that he's a member of the law firm of Carter and Hanley. Will you be seeing him again soon? I would suggest that we see as little as possible of Mr. Henley in the future. Why do you say that? It serves his purpose. I only encouraged his friendship to help me get a visa in London. Was that your only reason? No. Mr. Henley is a federal agent. When did you discover this? Last night. Why didn't you tell us at once? I wanted him safely out of this house. Any action against him here might have brought suspicion on your family. Oh, I see. Are you in love with him, Carla? No. I am not. Your suggestion is unreasonable, Colonel. If Carla were in love with Hanley, she never would have revealed his identity. The fact that she has done so is evidence of her loyalty. Sorry. Then it is all settled. Um, on the contrary, my dear. What? You must continue your friendship with him. If you were to suddenly drop him, it might arouse his suspicions. But Sidney... And make it more difficult for us to... to deal with him. But don't you think it's all right? We are making the decisions, Carla. You will continue your cordial relations with Mr. Hanley. Is that understood? Very well. More tea, officer? Thank you, horse. You'll make a tea next time if you can make tea. Oh, yes, sir. I make tea and coffee just the same. But I don't want you to make tea and coffee just the same. Oh, no, sir. I never make tea and coffee just the same. Oh, dear. Morning, boys. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, hello, Tim. Oh, oh, so you play the piano, too. How are you getting on? <laughs> did you bite you? Or did one of our playmates suck you one? Something like that. Well, that's what you get for using your own face. You would insist on the direct approach, old boy. Ah, old indirect philosophizing again. I told you so. I suppose if I'd worn a false fizz and a comic beezer, I could have passed anywhere. Except in that romantic interlude on the terrace. I hope you're not drifting into a schoolboy romance, old fella. She's a very charming young woman. I shall continue to be my charming self at least until after I get the lowdown. The lowdown? Yeah. I say, old boy, I hope you don't mean anything vulgar. Good morning, Tim. Good morning. Here's a transcribed copy of your shorthand notes. The music last night. Oh, yes, invisible ink drawn out by the heat, you know, the usual thing. Say, we've been trying to uh, work out a letter and number system to uncover a basic cipher. But we haven't got very far. You better check out for a while. Take a little rest. Oh, uh, all right. Yes, I'll take that couch. Call me if anything breaks, will you? I don't want to miss it. We added that upper line to carry the variations as we took them off the air on the phonograph record. Well, is this from the original line? Yes, the variations replace that wherever they occur. Yeah, but doesn't this look like a code uh, technique? Yes, but we're in the dark until we can break down some form of cipher. After which we can arrest Miss Nielsen on suspicion. That wouldn't solve our problem. She's merely a tool, as I suspect. We want the men higher up. Correct. And if we bait the trap properly... The right kind of cheese. We might draw them in. Well, the bigger the better. Chief Long Distance Call from Washington. Air Service. Oh, you better listen in on that extension. Come on, sweetheart, wake up. This may interest you. Oh. Hello? Yes, Colonel, go ahead. We've received a code radiogram from our squad leader at Greenland. Those bombing planes that left Canada have been forced down at Greenland with engine trouble. They diverted their course. They had to, to save their lives. One plane went into the ocean, but the pilot was saved by a patrol boat. What sort of engine trouble, Colonel? Chemical damage to the carburetor. Something seems to corrode and clog the feed and stops the gas flow. The planes are out of commission until we send new carburetors from the factory. You've kept this out of the newspapers? Well, we don't want to advertise it, but the general would like to know just what your office is doing. We're getting closer to a solution of the sabotage. Our best men are on the job. We must get the people at the top, the brains, not merely the operators. We need more time. And England needs more planes. We've got to go ahead regardless. The first squad of the new flying fortresses will be ready July 5th. An official order has gone through for their departure on that date. But that's taking big chances. What do you think armies do? Now, it's up to you to get results before that time. Goodbye. Hmm? There you are. July 5th is the deadline. And it proves one point to me. Those ships were sabotaged at the airdrome. In time to take effect too far out to sea to turn back. Right. Lucky they were on the northern course and could make Greenland. Well, it's a safe bet that messages were sent by agents in the vicinity of the airdrome. I get it. Get me a map of eastern Canada and the States. E.
gentlemen. Hot soup. Alphabet soup. I've got indigestion of the alphabet now. So have I. I never want to see a letter again. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I hope you don't hold it against me. Take it away. Take it away. Yes, sir. Come on, alphabet. Back in the dictionary for you. Well, we might as well admit it. First time it. We're sunk. S-U-N-K. That's our code signal. Hello, this is Carter and Hanley. Who's calling? Miss Nilsson? One moment, please. I will see if Mr. Hanley is in. Thank you. Uh, just a minute. Oh, Tim, someone wants to speak to Carter and Hanley. Oh. Get Tetlow and turn on the loudspeaker. Hey, Hatback, come on in and get this down quickly. Mr. Tetlow, step in. Come on, Sherlock. Hello? I have a party on the wire for you. Miss Nilsson, do you want to speak to her? Yes, put her on. Hello, Miss Nilsson. I will connect you with Mr. Hanley. Hello, Tim. Hello, Carla. I'm delighted to hear from you. Where are you? At Sands Point. Well, if you're in town, I'd ask you for lunch. Thank you, Tim. But uh, I am doing the inviting today. Fine. What is it? I'm starting my tour, July 4th at Utica. Will your concert be broadcast? Yes. Mr. Grenner has uh, booked me again on his radio program. But I suppose you're awfully busy. Well, I'm in the middle of a big case, but you know, Carla, you always take precedence over everything. I'll be delighted to accept. Oh, good. I'll reserve a box for you at the Opera House. I wouldn't miss it for the world. All right, Tim. Goodbye. Goodbye. That's done it. Flying Fortress is take off at daybreak, July the 5th. She broadcasts the night of July the 4th. Make your plans to go, Tim. Up to now, she's the only tangible clue you've got to stick close to. Well, I'm stuck here with that coat, I suppose. Well, maybe you could put on your false beard and fool yourself indirectly. Here's something to take along with you, Tim. Warrant for the arrest of Carla Nelson. Just in case. You never can tell. That's right. Confirmation. The new flying fortresses will take off at dawn. This will be the supreme test of our new formula. Come, help me prepare for our little messenger's flight to Canada. programs are all alike, aren't they? Oh, I think she's unusually good. Watch the length of the notes. Some are unusually long, others very short. Musically, an abnormal arrangement. It's a dot and dash system. But far from the Morse. Yes, one of the cleverest ciphers I've ever seen. Completely hidden in a combination of voice and accompaniment. Follow this phrase. C A N A D A. Canada. Now we're getting somewhere. I'll check with Royce before I go backstage. And you contact him and both of you go up on the roof garden together. The latitude and longitude breakdown gives us the exact location where the ships were sunk, so we know that's right. Yes, and applying the same method gives us this location in Upper New York State. There's nothing at that location, Mr. Oliver, except acres of abandoned farmlands and an old granary that hasn't been used for years. You know the name of it? Uh, Champlain Granary. I better look it over. Pronto. Take a plane. Open the door, Bessie. Oh, that's very attractive, my dear. I'm sure Hanley will be enchanted. I expect him presently. Why did you come? Mr. Hanley has been a great help to us. He simplified our task. I don't understand. He's engaged a secluded table on the hotel roof garden with an excellent view of the fireworks display. Also, an excellent view from the roof, opposite. 
what? I'm sorry to disappoint you, my dear, but I'm afraid you won't be having supper with him. What do you intend to do? The celebration will commence exactly at 10.30. The noise of the fireworks will prove a most valuable ally to us. Oh. I see. You will return to the hotel with Mr. Hanley. Invent some excuse to send him to the roof garden alone to wait for you. But don't you... Then you'll go to the hotel desk. Be seen by as many people as possible. And have the clerk arrange a reservation for you on the 11 o'clock train to New York. You will leave by that train. Are these your instructions? I'm carrying out Gwena's instructions. Is it possible that his confidence in you is misplaced? More appreciative than ever. Thank you, Tim. The music was magnificent, the artist exquisite, and you... Oh, were... always a flatterer. Haven't you anything nice to say about me? Yes. You are my favorite fan. That will do. You ready? Just a second. Bessie, my bag. A little more on your nose. Uh, that's enough. Thank you, Bessie. Good night. Good night. Good night. Roof garden, please. I hope you'll enjoy our quaint Fourth of July custom. You know, when it comes to fireworks, I'm just like a kid. I'm sure it's going to be nice. Oh, Tim. Hmm? It might be a little chilly on the roof. Do you mind if I stop and get a wrap? Why, no, of course not. Sixth floor, please. Yes, Miss Nelson. Six. You go on up, Tim. I'll join you in a minute. Sometimes a minute can seem like a lifetime. Send for my luggage, please. Certainly, Miss Nelson. Order. Yes, sir. Get the baggage down, please. You're leaving tonight? Yes, I, I've changed my plans. And will you please make a reservation on the New York train at 11? Certainly. Station ticket office, please. 318, please. Yes, sir. Forgive me for speaking to you, Miss Nelson. We did enjoy your concert so much. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Hello. Martin, can you give me a compartment to New York on the 11? That's right. The name is Nielsen. N-I-L-L-S-O-N. Thank you. Everything will be all right, Miss Nielsen. Compartment G in car 242. Sorry you're leaving us so soon. Here you are, miss. Cancel it. Garden, quickly. Yes, ma'am.
was afraid you were going to be late for the celebration. Tim, we have to leave here at once. Leave? What for? We are in great danger. Danger? Really? What is it? I can't tell you, no, but please. please now, wait. Go. If you know that, you know a lot more. Yes. I know who you are. Oh, do you? Well, I felt the truth about you, too. Tim, you're in a trap. It's partly my making, but I... I can't undo it now. Will you tell me who's in this thing with you? No. At least I'm not a traitor. Hmm. I might have guessed that. Please, let's go. No. I came up here looking for trouble. I'm not running away from it. Oh, Tim, please trust me. I know what I'm talking about. And I know that I fought you just as hard as you fought me. There's one thing I'll never understand. Why are you doing this? I know you won't believe me, but... It's because I... Oh, Tim. Because you mean everything to me. Please trust me. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll please take your seats. The celebration is about to start. Lights. Please, let's go. Is that the signal to spring the trap? Yes. Sewell, where'd he go? Down the fire escape. I lost him in the darkness. I'll find him. You take care of her. Rush her to the hospital and get the best surgeon you can find. She's got to be held. He's your authority. And don't let anybody interfere like it back. Okay, Tim. I know. Call Tetlo and report developments. Okay, Tim. Don't lose them. Don't worry. just came in from New York. Better open the cases for the doctor, boys. I trust you've had a successful evening. Far from it. The last moment, Carla ruined my plans for getting rid of Henry. Carla? He saved his life at the risk of her own.
Well, in that case, Hadley may have followed you. I'm certain he didn't, but we'll make sure. Send him outside to make a search. All right, boys. There's a darkness. In a hoot owl. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. There's nothing out there, Colonel. Expect Mr. Grandel to contact us. About an hour. How's it going, Doctor? A perfect reaction. The result of my improved formula. The concentration is now almost as great as radium. With an affinity for gasoline so powerful that each drop splits into molecules and impregnates more than 100 gallons, enabling me to judge the exact timing of the corrosive action. The flying fortresses will be far at sea before anything is discovered. Too far to reach Greenland this time, huh? Precisely. Where's that dust coming from? Somebody left a window open. Go close it, Joe. Give me a hand, will you, fellas? Sure. Okay. Yes, Colonel. Any news come through from Canada tonight? Not since midnight, sir. Well, we'll check again. See if any birds have come in the last hour. Hey, Joe. 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 Huh? Did any pigeons come in the last hour? Did any pigeons come in? That wasn't dust. Come on. Joe! Joe! He's not 
Shut up here, Roy. 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 Roy! Where'd you go? What are you shouting about, Don? What's wrong? Something's wrong. Both of my men have disappeared. But they couldn't disappear in here. And they have. One of them was up here, and he's gone. And the other was down there, and he's gone. Did you look in the windowing room? No, sir. Well, go up and see. Yes, sir. Turn that motor on. Did you find him? No, but I found a stranger in there. Stranger? Yeah, he looked like an old tramp. What did you do? I blew him down the flax chute. <laughs> There's 25 feet of flax in there. He'll suffocate. Who cares? I do, you fool. <laughs> I'm afraid he's as good as drown right now, Colonel. You must try and get him out down below. Okay. Still on your own, Mr. Oliver? More or less, Mr. Hanley. Look out. Quick, pull the lever. We must find out who it is. At your service, Monsieur Webster. I gave your compliment to Monsieur Masden. And Scotland Yard extends its compliments to you. From the FBI, Colonel Wenzel. Come on, boys, we're in a hurry. Come on. We've got to get to a telephone and call Canada about those planes. Ah, delicious looking berries, Maggie. Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Grenner. Well, good morning, Mr. Uh, Hanley. May I present Mr. Oliver? <laughs> Delighted. How do you do, sir? Uh, well, this is, this is a pleasant surprise. Is it? Well, we just came by to pick up something I left here the other night. Yes? Uh, what was it? You. Me? Yes, you. Haven't you read the morning papers? Well, no, as a matter of fact, I haven't. It's very I interesting. It's was... yes, particularly from Utica and points north. Uh, practically everybody's in the clink, including the two Canadian gentlemen who've been jazzing up the airplane carburetors. Dr. Rowan, Denby, Lieutenant Fenway, and your perfect butler, Colonel Wenzel. Suspected of sabotage in London. And Liverpool, Mr. Oliver. And Leeds, Mr. Hanley. Yeah. Why, gentlemen, this is, this is amazing. If these men have been guilty of any wrongdoing, I've been imposed upon shamefully. You wouldn't impose on anyone, would you? Oh, uh, cream, pardon me. Uh, two sugar? None, thank you. Yeah. Well, the stuff's not good for you anyway. How about a cup of tea with your friends? They're waiting for you. So are we. Get Mr. Grunner's hat, stick and gloves, please. Get up. I remind you, gentlemen, that this is a free country and I'm a citizen. You've got nothing on me. Oh, no? We haven't forgotten the little contribution of $100,000 that you made to a certain organization, which you happen to forget to mention in your income tax report. Baron Greiner, alias Mr. Greiner. Your hat, sir. Gloves. Two stick. And your boutonniere. Very ducky, Mr. Oliver. You said it, Mr. Henley. Come on. You've got to get well now. I want to. No. Besides, the doctor told me I'm out of danger. Danger? That's what brought us together. Or not your choosing. Someone else's invention. I... I suppose they told you. 
that you place me under arrest. Yes, and I understand. You have done your duty. We are both soldiers. You won. That's all. Nobody wins this way. And one day when all this is over, it will just be you and I. Yes, my darling. And if your work can bring peace, that's all I want. That's all this dizzy old world wants. And when peace comes, the ghosts can take on flesh and blood. Okay. I say, the direct approach, old boy? Right on the nose. Hello, Reggie. Hello, Carla. Feeling better? Yes, thank Good. you. Good. Well, there may be something to be said for your method, Mr. Hanley. And for once in a way, I'm adopting it. Carla, my dear, I want you to accept these with my very sincere good wishes for your complete recovery. Sweet of you. Thank you, darling. Very nice, Mr. Oliver. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hanley. And now, indirectly, we haven't much time to catch that plane. Uh, are you going away? Yes, we're going back to England. I suppose I'll have to put up with him. Can't get rid of him. I say, old boy, you were kissing her on the mouth. I never denied it, but I distinctly heard you say right on the nose. I will explain it to you indirectly on the way over. Oh. 